Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Business Plus. My name is Rachel Kahogo and this is where we give you ideas to start your business or help you grow in your business to reach the epic and make money because we say business is more than meets the eye. And today I'm with Liz. She's a student doing accounts, but she decided she'll venture into business and that is scented candles. And today we'll be talking about how she started making scented candles and how it ended up giving her money because as you say business is more than with the eye so let's hear about her journey in business so that you can get the idea and know if you want to do this business or uh, grow in the business that you are already doing so Asa, hello hi how are you doing i'm good have you been i've been good okay yeah so introduce yourself then we get into business all right um hi guys my name is liz wanjiko i am a student at kabarak i do scented candles mm -hmm. and i started last year june 2022 yeah okay. all right <laughs> so how you're doing accounts right yeah. at school how is even accounts and scented candles related is <laughs> it something you got from school or, or it's something totally different well, um, naturally, I am a creative. I like using my imagination and exploring what I can get out of that. You know, like I'm a hands-on person. Mm. Anything that requires me to use creativity is where I thrive. Mm. So, yeah, that is part of... Part of business. Yeah. Of business. Yes. All right, so what inspired you to start this business? Well, initially, it started more as a project than a business. I remember when I was um, doing a goal setting session with my coach, mm. yes. Okay. <laughs> and um, he was like, what are your goals for 2022? Mm. And I told him that something I would want to try out. This was in January last year. Mm. I remember it was 12th January. Okay. Um, so at the time, uh, my granddad was suffering from diabetes. Mm. And I think seeing him go through the, you know, the symptoms of diabetes and you're thinking to yourself, what can, like, what can be there for him when I'm not? Yeah. And your, my, my first thought was something like scent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have, I have always fancied doing scented candles, but have never actually gotten to doing it. So in my mind, um, at the time I'm thinking when, he lights a candle and I'm not there, it, you know, eases his entire being yes, and da, da, you yes. get, yeah, so that's, that's how it started as a project. And then when he got, when he got sick mm -hmm. and he was in hospital, I, I told myself when he gets out of hospital, I'll make him a candle. So that's when I started researching. Ah, nice. Yeah. So you started your research on YouTube or what did you do? Did you go to school or something? No. Hey, internet, my internet. God. <laughs> YouTube, Google, every website that you can find. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it doesn't have any charge. So it's free of charge. You guys, come on, Nataka Kwanza, such a thing. Remember, you can do your research and you'll start making them, Cindy. Yes. And um, how many varieties of scents do we have here? Uh, right now, I have three. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is, I can guess this is vanilla, right? It has a bit of or vanilla. Uh, <laughs> Irigani? Uh, that is pumpkin spice latte. Ah, nice. Yes. Uh -huh. So um, it has cinnamon, mm -hmm. it has vanilla. It's a type of coffee. For the coffee lovers, mm -hmm. they always get this scent, right? I don't know how. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And then now this is just like plain coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I have strawberry and vanilla combined. Mm -hmm. Then this is lavender. Lavender. Yeah. All right. And now this is where most of the people have a lot of questions. How do you balance just to make sure that it's not oversaturated and um, the week is right and everything? It needs a lot of mads. Now at Wengi Walipotelea Mamboya mads and everything because it looks like a lot of science and mads in here. Yeah. So how do you make sure that it's not oversaturated? Um, first of all, research. 
research, research, because some of these things you can't just guess and decide, you know, one is to two and it's gonna work, it might explode on you. So um, when you research, you get to see the variations that other candle makers are using. Mm -hmm. Even scientists who, you know, there's something called candle science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you read and you watch videos, YouTube videos and all that information in the internet, now you get to try out for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that means um, you don't just make candles and sell them. Mm -hmm. You have to test them out first. Mm -hmm. And that's why the first, you see, as much as the idea started in January, I started selling in June. Mm -hmm. That whole process was research and also sampling. You give them to people like for free and you get their feedback. For free? <laughs> okay. It's okay because now you have to do the sampling in give people for free to mm. give you the feedback. Yeah. Um, how much is the capital? How much did you start with? I started with roughly around 5,000 mm -hmm. and it wasn't at a go. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so maybe I would get like a 1K somewhere, I go buy something. Mm -hmm. And honestly, something that I would tell people is just start where you are. There are there is no time you'll, you'll ever have enough capital, mm -hmm. yes. But when you're able to work with what you have at the moment, because most of these things, there are the appropriate equipment for making candles. Mm -hmm. But you find me um, going to a store like Gilani's, I get whatever I can. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what can I use? You get, so yeah. So what do I need to, like, from scratch? Give us the whole process of just to make a candle and what are the right equipments that I need? Okay. Um, of course, with a candle, mm -hmm. you need wax. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And yes. So um, when it comes to wax, mm -hmm. there are a variety of waxes mm -hmm. from paraffin, beeswax, soy wax, coconut. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you as a candle maker, mm -hmm. when you define your niche, it will also determine the type of wax that you work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, it was more natural mm -hmm. based because paraffin is synthetic, mm -hmm. so it releases toxins. Mm -hmm. But I use soy wax and coconut wax. Mm -hmm. So why I use that specific blend is mm -hmm. because there are benefits of soy wax and coconut wax that I want to tap into. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, you get a vessel that is heat resistant. Mm -hmm. So most people, there's something called um, a pitcher. Okay. A pitcher is just a metallic jar that's made of aluminum. It's quite thick. Mm -hmm. That is the right one, but I use this big cup. You see this metallic cup, ah, but not the big one. Yes, yes. 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 Leather, which is like tumble. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. So um, that's what I, I use currently. Mm -hmm. And you just... Which is uh, more reliable and you'd get it faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, at this point, it's just using what working that you have. Yeah. yeah. So um, you measure out your wax. Mm -hmm. Now, because I use two waxes, you also have to determine the ratio mm -hmm. of the amount of wax you want to use. Mm -hmm. So you do your calculation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if this is where mom gets <laughs> in. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So if I have like two jars, mm -hmm. because I want maybe um, a candle that is 200 grams each, mm -hmm. that means I'll measure out 400 grams of wax combined. Mm -hmm. Then you pour it into your vessel, mm -hmm. you put it in a pot of boiling water. Mm -hmm. It's called the double boiling method. Right. So yeah. you don't boil it directly? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just put it in a pot of boiling water mm -hmm. and then you um, leave it there to boil. Mm -hmm. Yes, just make sure that the water is not like too much. Maybe my jazz for Yeah, because it will mix with the wax mm -hmm. and it might ruin the results of what you want. Okay. Yeah, so um <clears throat> once you put it in the pot, you leave it to boil. Now this takes a while for the wax to melt completely. Mm -hmm. And then there's a catch. Once it is melted, mm -hmm. you have to wait for it to reach its melting point. Mm -hmm. Like, you see when it's melted, mm -hmm. even if it is maybe mm -hmm. 40 degrees, mm -hmm. you might find that its actual like heat point is maybe 50. Mm -hmm. So you need a thermometer mm -hmm. to measure that temperature. Mm -hmm. Then once it reaches like the optimum temperature, you remove it from the pot, mm -hmm. but you have to keep on stirring. And then at this point is where you add your scent. Okay. 
yeah so based on the amount of wax you use that's how much scent like you will measure mm -hmm. there's a ratio mm -hmm. um you add the scent combine it then you see in this jar mm -hmm. there's a wick Yes. So that means I already prepared this beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use I use glue gun mm -hmm. to stick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, That's when crazy. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when you when you've already prepared your glass jar, mm -hmm. you pour out your wax. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, I also measure because I don't want it to be too much or too little. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. based on the value you want to give to the customer. Yeah. So um. Normally, because there's nothing supporting the wick, mm -hmm. you have to put something to suspend the wick from the top. Okay. Yeah, like this. Mm -hmm. So normally I would use maybe a pencil. Mm -hmm. There's an equipment for that, like yeah. I said, it's called a wick holder. <laughs> but I just use colored pencil because I have a lot of that. Okay. Yeah, so you allow it to cool mm -hmm. until it hardens. Mm -hmm. Again... Um roughly two to three hours okay. yes for it to harden completely mm -hmm. and then you have to make sure that the top is smooth okay. yeah mm -hmm. in case you find that you have some depressions mm -hmm. yeah it's usually called a sinkhole okay. yeah because it's like a tunnel at the mm -hmm. bottom mm -hmm. i mean at the center the edit, uh -huh. yeah um you either warm it up with something or you warm up the wax that you left over mm -hmm. and then you fill it so that you have a flat top mm -hmm. Yes. Now, mm. once it hardens, that's not where it ends. There's something called curing. Mm. Curing, it's like for people who have done uh, mjengo, mm. they know cement, like once you are done with cement, you have to, I don't know, power water and leave it for like mm. five days. Yeah. It's the same thing with this. It allows it to, like the wax vessel molecules to come mm. together. Mm. So you have to leave it for at least two days. Mm -hmm. Personally, I leave mine for a week before you light it. Okay. That's how you find that um, some candles have better scent than others, mm -hmm. despite following the same process. Right. Yeah. It. So if you leave yours for like two days, the scent is better yeah. than using it immediately. Yes. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> I know, right? Mm. Again, it's a lot of research. Yeah, a lot mm. of research. <laughs> All right, so you guys have the process, but we'll be going for a short break so that you can get the business on one. When you come back, we'll be talking about um, the branding and how you package it to make your clients love it more. Because Nikitengeneza vizuri, but I still pack it kimandazi mandazi. You guys won't buy it. The clients won't love it, right? So we'll be getting into the business 101. Also, I'll be telling you about the sponsors of today. Then as we come back, we'll be talking more about branding and the challenges that we go through this path because it's not a path of roses, India. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Hello guys, I'm here to introduce to you our sponsors of the day and they are the Nakuru Box and they have a program that's called the Nakuru Box Academy. This is a program that offers training in digital skills to students and people who want to advance in their careers and this is what they offer. Data analysis, artificial intelligence and software development. And in partnership with Liquid Intelligence Technologies, we offer courses that meet the international standards. And with this, you can be able to have competence in your businesses and any other thing that you want to do. All right? So, you will also learn uh, different coding languages like the Python, JavaScript, and the Java. If you want to get all these, it's under the Nakoro Box Academy. We can also partner with high schools to train their high school students in these important uh, skills that they have to learn. As I've said, it includes the coding languages, uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and software development. So contact Nakuru Box Academy today with the contacts that we've given you right here, and you will get to learn all of these or get, uh, or get people that you know to learn all these. So that's how we get into the business. Hi viewers, um, these are a few tips that I would like to share in terms of running and even owning a business. And first of all, it is to demystify branding because most people only 
limit branding to the logo, the name, the color. Branding is more than that. It's how you present yourself as a person. It's also how you appeal to your customers with all their senses. In terms of sight, hearing, smelling, touching, all that. And then um, secondly, make sure that you're not just telling people about your product, show them your product. What that simply means is it's easier for people to take a gamble with you when they realize that you actually have something going. Instead of just um, telling them that there's something you'd want to create, make something that they can actually see and feel and you know, just imagine the journey with you of how the future looks like for your business. And um, something else, just start with what you have. Be very um, creative with even the smallest and insignificant of things. You can make something really big. Allow your imagination to go wild. And another thing, always put God first because um, this journey of you know, being a business person, it requires way more than your intellect and your creativity and maybe your money and your resources. There's a higher power that even gives you speed, favor and connections. And yeah, that's it. Uh, my name is Liz Wanjiko, founder of Heavenly Glow, which is a scented candles business. And you are watching Business Plus. Hmm, you guys, this candle. So <laughs> at least. Alright. So we are back and uh, we want to talk about packaging and branding. Why is it important for one to package your uh, your products very well? Um let me just give an example. Okay. Maybe in the huh? dating field, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the world of dating, yes. most of the time how somebody presents themselves to you mm -hmm. is what will determine whether they will win you over or not, okay. right? So even before you get to know them as a person, yes. it's how they approach you. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. So you see, if um, I just pick something, some random tin over there, mm -hmm. and then I put my wax in as much as I have poured my heart into the wax mm -hmm. and the candle, sorry, mm -hmm. but I put it in something that looks shiny, shiny. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not like theme. You know the way you can have like a naked cake and it's a vibe. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But it's just something, eh, this person did not put any effort. Mm -hmm. You get yes. people will not even look at your product twice. Mm -hmm. So with branding, I mean with sorry, with packaging, mm -hmm. yeah. it allows you mm -hmm. to be able to get the customer to even look at your product. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. because sometimes when you're passing like a shop, a dress shop, yes. if they put the ugliest dresses on display, right. yes. you will not enter into that mm -hmm. store. But you see something like, oh, that looks good. You'll be um, prompted to go in and ask yes. like, what's the price, what's the material and that. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. When I look at this, it's pretty, mm -hmm. you get. So I'll be interested, wow, what's this? Mm -hmm. So I open it and it smells nice, yes. you get. So I want to know more about this product so it's the first impression exactly all right so for you apart from what we see right now if you want to have bought the candle right you wanted to present it to me how do you package it is it just like this or there's something more oh no no, no. Okay. <laughs> um i put it in a box mm -hmm. and then because it's glass i have to find something that will prevent it from breaking mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I put in a thank you card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, thank you for your purchase. Yes. Yeah, so that you can enhance the customer experience mm -hmm. even with unraveling your yes. product. Yeah. Wow. So, what are some of the challenges that you faced uh, from you started making these candles? Uh, first of all, the most obvious one is capital. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, and secondly, mm -hmm. I would say, Ideally, like in terms of ideas, mm -hmm. what? Yes, in terms of ideas, you find that before I came up with this, mm -hmm. I had to try so many other jars, mm -hmm. and you're wondering what does the market really want? Mm -hmm. What will portray to the people mm -hmm. what my idea is? Mm -hmm. If you get what I mean, like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
for me that was a challenge and also defining my niche and my target market mm -hmm. yeah because you're thinking to yourself oh anyone can buy candles but yeah. yeah every time you're making a business plan or you're going into such platforms that require a business plan mm -hmm. they ask you what your target market is so yeah. for me defining that mm -hmm. and also um the process of coming up with the logo and the mm -hmm. this yeah. sticker yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that whole thing mm -hmm. yeah so all right, and uh, I see your candles are called Heavenly Glow, yeah. right? So, is it important for someone to have a brand name, or is to me a Heavenly Glow for a month, and I feel, ah, oh, let me change it to something else? Ni change ni kahugu, then kidogo kidogo I change it. Is it important for one to get a brand and stick with it? Yes. Why? Um, consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency is very key. Of course, when you're starting out, you'll be experimenting with a lot of names. Yeah. But once you gather momentum, mm -hmm. I would advise you just stick with the name mm -hmm. that your customers have come to know and love. Mm -hmm. Because it also affects their customer psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If one day um, you just come and you tell your mom, today I want to be a teacher, you start mm -hmm. studying um, teaching, the next day I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You get it doesn't it doesn't paint a good yeah. picture. It's the same thing even with your customers. Like they are unable to see stability and even trust you with their money because you are <laughs> like you you don't really know what you want. Yeah, it's, it's not like I want to be in this business. I don't want to. Yeah, hey, imagine if you wake up one day and then your shopkeeper has started a chemist the next day a hardware yes. you get you'll find someone else who sticks to being a shopkeeper so it's the same thing consistency is key mm -hmm. all right so let's talk about the competition in this field the field is now saturated we have a lot of people who are doing the scented candles mm -hmm. different types different shapes and you're wondering, nita nunua wapi, nita wacha wapi. So you, who you're venturing into this business, how do you maneuver? How do you make yours unique enough so that I'll rather buy from Heavenly Glow and not somewhere else? Um, I think it's it bottles down to identity. Right. Again, me as a person, mm -hmm. I am not going to try and do what Rachel is doing. Mm -hmm. You get. Mm -hmm. So there are people who relate to me as Liz, mm -hmm. and that is what makes my product unique. Mm -hmm. Because um, no one can do things the way I do them. Mm -hmm. No one thinks the way I think. Mm -hmm. So there's, in as much as there's competition, mm -hmm. there's always enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. The problem is that people think. Mm -hmm. um, with competition, I cannot start because who will buy my product? Yeah. The thing is, there are people who, like your product um, addresses their specific need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be like anyone else. Wow. Yeah. Stay true to yourself. And uh, one question in a kilam to in this field, Anna Lizanga. Is it, can I just do this for business? Will it give me a profit immediately? Or Pia Hapa, I have to have a lot of patience. At what point did it start giving you um, money? Because we say business is more than meets the eye. Yeah. So when you start business, you want to get income, you want to get money. Um, at what point in the process I will realize scented candles are actually paying my bills and I can do some of the things with the money I get from this. Well, like you said, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, first of all, for you to recover the amount of money you put into it, you'll have sold quite a number. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't discourage you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I did mm -hmm. to, and I still do, to make sure that you have consistency mm -hmm. and you stay afloat is reinvesting the money that I get. Mm -hmm. Like when I sell this candle, of course, this is something I want to buy, but you think to yourself, I'm not yet at that point where I have that luxury to buy that. Mm -hmm. So until you start making profit, reinvest your money. For me, it was um, the first time I brought this one. Okay. Let me let, let me let me steal the secret for you guys. <laughs> yes, because um, with most people. Mm -hmm. It's easier to buy something in smaller portions than yeah. big mm -hmm. because um, you're thinking to yourself, mm -hmm. in case it turns out to be bad, at least I won't have lost a lot of money. Yeah. So the poor will sample all of them mm -hmm. 
but in small quantities. Again, this is also making money, you get. So um, introducing this small version of it helped me even sell the big ones because once they smell this one, they also get to buy the big one. Yeah, so for me it was when I introduced this one. Yeah. So it's better for you to start with smaller portions. It will help you sell what you eventually want to sell. Cynthia? Yeah. Wow. So that has been it for the scented candles with Liz in the Business Plus. Now, you know, if you're venturing into this business, you know what you need to do for you to be a big business person. And again, you have to be patient. All right. Pia Kama Omesa, how some of the things that you need to do, Rudy Pale Kwa Business 101, and you will know exactly what you need to do to be a, a big business person in this industry. And also, business will be more than it will meet the eye. So we'll see you in the next episode. Remember, we have um, a repeat of the same on Friday at 7.30. You can talk to us um, on MBC ITV Facebook page and let's uh, all be in this conversation. See you next week. Bye.